For schools to connect with, with DDS, uh, I think it's very important that uh, it's a collaborative um, a team in terms of uh, reaching out towards each other. Uh, first, uh, from a, a school's perspective, uh, getting to know what uh, adult agencies uh, are in the community, in their community, uh, also what adult agencies might be involved with um, uh, students that they already have, uh, because an agency like DDS uh, has a ch children's program where uh, we start serving uh, children uh, beginning at the age of three on up. So um, uh, DDS uh, may already be involved within the schools, and sometimes a teacher or a transitional coordinator may not know it at that time. Um, we are on the website. Uh, you can access uh, any agency uh, on the mass.gov website, uh, particularly uh, through the Executive Office of uh, Health and Human Services. All of our agencies are listed on there. Uh, also, DDS reaches out uh, to school systems, to um, the special ed directors, and to the superintendents at least once a year. Uh, we send a letter out usually uh, introducing ourselves along with uh, contact information. So uh, we are on the web. We do reach out and uh, also ask uh, schools to uh, contact us. Uh, if they don't know who to contact, uh, they can either find out on the website. We have a uh, database where per town where the local area office is or they can contact a central office uh, or if they want to contact me directly if they want. Uh, my direct line is 617-624-7785 and I do get uh, request uh, inquiries uh, occasionally um, along this uh, uh, same topic and um, uh, be very happy to connect the school system with the local area office. We, we do have uh, many uh, documents, brochures, publications that uh, uh, describe a transition uh, globally, generally, uh, but also to transition uh, within, uh, from DDS. Uh, on our website, we have, uh, which is mass.gov slash DDS, we have Attorney 22 section, uh, which uh, going on to that uh, web page, we have uh, many publications and, and many uh, in information that is helpful not only to professionals, uh, educators, but also to families and students themselves. Um, if there's one to single out, I would say we do have a publication which we call The Road Forward. Um, and it describes not only the transition chapter 688 process, but also describes that process through DDS from soup to nuts, beginning with uh, eligibility process, all the way to what a transition uh, service coordinator does, to the individual transition plan, to uh, services uh, while the student is still in school, to the adult services that the student would be transitioning to after school, along with uh, information about um, the different uh, adult uh, service providers out there where families and students can start looking into while the student is still in school in terms of what agencies are out there that uh, they would like to explore, uh, are interested in. Uh, also, too, the publication uh, not only, um, oh, sorry, we, we have it in, in many different languages, too. We have it in, in Spanish, Portuguese, Haitian Creole, Russian, uh, Vietnamese, and Chinese. And uh, so it's available online uh, in many different languages, so that way an educator or a transition specialist can download it and pass it out at either the IEP or at um, if they host any transition conferences, um, uh, workshops uh, within their school. The, um, the booklet is designed to provide information. Uh, meeting with families in many different venues, uh, we found that families, particularly when it comes to transition, as they get closer to 22 or aging out of school, uh, require th really want three things. They want information, they want information, and you know what the third one is. Uh, so we heard that. We heard that loud and clear. So the book is designed to provide that information, not just to tell what we do, not just to um, have a listing of different services we have, but to try and shepherd and navigate the family, the family member and the student through our services and what kind of services we offer. Because uh, many times, families, particularly at this stage that we're talking about, they don't even know the questions to ask. Uh, so it's, it's a very 
unusual position that they find themselves in, where after all the years of their having their child in special education, where they've been in control, where they've always made sure that all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed, are facing this uh, vast unknown, and it's scary for them, and it's frightening. Uh, so we hear that, we understand that. So we try and provide this booklet and fashion it in a way so that way the families, the students, and the educators, because we also uh, talked with uh, professionals and other educators in terms of what do you need? When you're talking with a family, when you're talking with a student in terms of post-special education, what are they looking for and what would help you do that job? So uh, I would recommend The Road Forward, which can be found on our website. Well, through the, the 680 process, uh, it initiates an eligibility process and sometimes students are found ineligible. Uh, when that happens, uh, two things, there are two things that happen. One is um, the, the, the person, the student can go through an uh, appeals process for the eligibility and that's through the, and, and they are informed of their rights and responsibilities. So um, that is one thing that is available to them. But in terms of the chapter 688, that doesn't end. That's still, that's still a law and it's still something that uh, still needs to uh, uh, move forward. So um, uh, the Chapter 688 is then transferred to another agency uh, where uh, they will then pick up the uh, transitional uh, responsibilities for the student because the student is still entitled. What Chapter 688 does is entitles what's called the Individual Transition Plan, where still it's necessary for the, the student's team to get together and to um, uh, still determine or identify what supports and what the community needs are for the student when they leave special education. So the, the 688 doesn't end with uh, they're found ineligible. 688 still continues and it has to by law. I think that um, the, the reaching out process that we talked about earlier is, is step one. Uh, where um, finding out who's in the area, how do you connect with them, and things like that. What's important is to uh, invite the DDS uh, Transition Service Coordinator um, to either um, IEP meetings for a student or to invite them to whenever there's a workshop on transition to invite the local area office uh, or sometimes just try and initiate uh, a meeting with other educators uh, within the, the district. So that way um, we can know who's in the area and uh, what the needs are because Massachusetts is, is, is a pretty diverse state geographically. Uh, it's not just Boston. Uh, and, and all the, the different geographic areas have different needs, um, particularly around uh, services, supports, and how to get there. So uh, in terms of looking at transition, looking at what's necessary for the students of a particular district, uh, those needs might be different in another part of the state. So it really doesn't generalize. So it's important to connect with an area office and uh, to invite them in, um, let them know pretty much also to the, the uh, students that they have. So that way DDS will can at least begin to look forward in, in terms of thinking of, well, uh, in meeting with these agencies, uh, the school districts, and also to other agencies, there might be more uh, collaborative efforts in terms of uh, connecting uh, with the needs of that population or that district, but also to how we can work collaboratively with other agencies, just like the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission. ICI, uh, along with uh, DDS, uh, published a, a, a great um, publication, uh, School Days to Pay Days. And and one of the taglines is, it's never too early to talk about work. Well, it's never too early to talk about transition. Um, it starts, it starts. Uh, it should start early, because it's gonna happen. And at some point in time, uh, your student is going to transition out of school. Uh, they're gonna age out. Uh, when I do uh, conferences or workshops with families, um, I ask, if it's in the early winter, I'll ask the question, um, okay, you know, April 15th is coming. Who's done their taxes yet? Nobody's looking at taxes. Oh, I mean, it's only January. It's only February. You got plenty of time. Oh, you do? You know, and, and it's going to happen. 
and uh, the student is going to age out of school at some point. So it's important to uh, uh, begin that process, to ask the questions, see what's out there, uh, connect with DDS, because one of the things is that DDS may not know that there's a student coming down the pike. They may not be involved in our children's uh, services. So uh, uh, we may not know the students. So it's important many times for a, a transition specialist to uh, maybe st start identifying students who may be, you know, kind of like DDS eligible uh, to let the area office know that, you know, we have these students here that, you know, might be coming down the pike and want to invite you in. So that way you can take a look at them, uh, get to know them, see if they're eligible for children's services. Uh, also to just to help plan because it's never too early. It's, it, starts, it starts earlier than you think, and it comes much uh, sooner than a parent is ready for. What is also important is that what's nice with uh, IDEA is that with the discussion of transition is starting much earlier now, which is nice, because that helps families to begin to think about it. Because uh, many times families are just going along, you know, they have, they have the student and they have their other family members and things like that as you're paying attention to. But, you know, all this time is happening. You know, the hourglass stands going through the hourglass. So at some point in time, the student is going to be finished with school. And it just catches up to people very quickly. Um, I would also caution, not caution, but just add that for a transition specialist is that particularly when a student is beginning to turn 18, there's a lot happening. Um, there's a lot of um, what I call is a lot of parallel tracks, and they don't intersect. So it, it gets very, very demanding for a family. They're, they're going through uh, the possibility of uh, their student uh, aging out of school. They're looking at uh, MCAS in terms of what's that going to mean for my, my uh, student, my son or daughter. They might be going through eligibility with an agency like DDS. Uh, they might be going through uh, looking at do we need to pursue guardianship for this person because it, they're turning 18, they've turned 18. Uh, so there's a lot happening there and it's all different, it doesn't uh, intersect so there's a lot of different things going on and for the first time in their lives they're really finding themselves not in control and, and they really need a lot of hand holding. So DDS uh, uh, is sensitive to that and we do help families which we're involved with but they're not involved in an agency like DDS or Mass Rehab Commission um, it'll be important sometimes even though there's only so much a transition specialist could do just to check in oh by the way you know did did you hear back from this agency or did you apply for this or whatever uh, just because there's a lot happening and some families are on top of the game and there's some families who, because of the dynamics, uh, really need uh, some uh, navigation, navigating because, again, I say different tracks, but different, they're dealing with different bureaucracies and agencies. And we sometimes don't make things as smoothly as they should be. So that's, that's something else that's going on where um, just because may mention guardianship to a family or may mention eligibility to their agency sometimes doesn't mean that that's happening because if a transition specialist doesn't know where to go or who to contact, it can just be sure that many times a family won't either. So that's something that I think that's very important for uh, people to understand early on in the process. So it's never too early, not only for the parent, but it's never too early also for the transition specialist.